Now that we've rigged our spoon, we can start to bring it to life. So, I am going to animate my spoon jumping onto screen a few jumps, and then looking in the bowl, and then jumping and landing in the bowl. You'll recognize that some of the techniques that we use for this is going to be very similar to the bouncing ball. There is one big difference, though, between the bouncing ball and our spoon, and that's that we want our spoon to seem to be alive. The bouncing ball had a, a force imparted upon it. Someone threw the ball, someone rolled the ball, something hit the ball that caused it to start moving. The difference between something moving and something being alive is the illusion that the living thing has the ability to cause forces on its own, to use its thoughts to make itself move. So we're going to have a couple of additional things that we have to add in here for that. Now parts of this may get a little slow and boring to watch, and if that's the case, I will speed through those sections um, with a time lapse. So first things first though, let's set up a camera that shows this scene the way we want to show it. I'm going to go to Create, Cameras, Camera, and I'm going to change my layout under Panels to be two panes side by side. In this pane, I will change this to Camera 1. I'll go ahead and select that camera and change it to Render Cam. And I'll start to position this camera for the shot. Now you'll notice that my textures are not showing up in this camera. I can hit 6 and they'll come back. I'm going to go ahead and hide the grid in both of these just to make it a little easier to see. So now we have our camera set up. I'm going to also turn on my resolution gate so I can see what part of this camera is actually going to be visible. And I don't really necessarily need my outliner right now because almost everything I'm going to be animating on is going to be this control. I'm going to select the camera and under my attribute editors, I'm going to make sure that the display option is set to this so I can see it a little more clearly. And I'm going to set some keyframes on this camera in order to get the camera motion to show what I want it to show. Now I can always change this later, but I'm going to aim for about 240 frames. So, if I pick a location for my camera to start, we'll start somewhere like this, maybe a little further away. I will select the camera and hit S to set this keyframe. And then I want to move in a little closer and sort of tumble around a little bit. So maybe something like this. Hit S. And so now this is my camera animation. Just something simple to give us a little bit of motion in the shot. Now one thing I will do is because this camera animation seems to ease out of this first pose, I'm going to go ahead and change that. So if I were to open up my animation editor, graph editor, you'll see that all of this motion starts here, ends here, but we're seeing this easing at the beginning. And instead, I'll grab all of these keyframes and set them to linear. The reason for that is now it will feel like the camera was already moving at the beginning of this shot and it slows to a stop at the end. Now, the camera is in place so I can use this as my template for what we're going to see in the final shot. And that's important because I want to have my spoon bounce in or jump in from off camera. 
So that means I'll be doing a lot of my animating in this viewport and seeing how it looks in this viewport. I'll hold down J to rotate around to 90 degrees. And this will be pretty much where I start. So even though my character is starting off camera, I'm still going to animate it as if we could see it because I may end up changing the camera later or something like that. And I don't want to have to go back and reanimate that. It also will make the con um, it will also make the continuity of the jumps feel more realistic if they're if they are realistic even when they're off screen. So, for a starting frame, I'm going to start relatively neutral, but I don't want it to be just perfectly stiff. If this character is alive, I want to go ahead and give it a little bit of a pose. Um, I'll leave the squash and stretch all normal. But maybe I'll give it a little bit of a bend backwards. I'll change my bend angle to 90. And you'll notice that I have already set a keyframe on, on this control by hitting S. So everything has got a keyframe on it, and I currently have auto key turned on. So now I can add a little bit of bend back. And to raise my bend height, I will hold down control so I have more finite precision on where I put that bend control. And so that allows me to bend the character back in the starting pose. Now, for a jump to happen, we need the character to squash down in order to build up um, energy and anticipation and then push off. So this is our neutral pose. Let's go ahead and make our squash pose. I'll go to say frame maybe seven and I'll set another keyframe. Now I'm going to squash my character down and I'm going to bend my character forward and I may go ahead and lower my bend height just a touch just to lean it forward a little bit. I'm going to add just a little bit more squash to that. There we go. And so now it feels like if I use the greater than, less than keys or the period and comma to step forward to that, it feels like my character goes from sort of neutral to squashed down. So this is how the character would build up energy in order to jump. So to actually get off the ground though, the character has to take that energy and push down on the floor with it. So that's going to happen pretty quickly, maybe over two frames. My character will go from squashed down to back up. So I'll create that pose and I'll go ahead and stretch my character out. Now, I like to add a little bit of the reverse angle bend, but I'm going to lean the character forward because I'm going to have it angle in the direction of the arc that we want it to jump. So I have three keyframes now. My neutral, my neutral, my squash, my stretch. Let's go ahead and stretch it just a little bit more. Maybe accentuate that just a little bit more. So I'll need the pose where the character's up in the air, but to help me get that a little easier, I'm going to get the landing first. Because once I figure out where the character is going to land, then really the up in the air part will just be halfway in between. So I'll go forward, let's say maybe, maybe about to 17, and I'll hit S. And then I'm going to move this forward to the landing position. And the cool thing about this is this is also a contact pose. So this is the contact pose from the character jumping. This is where the character contacts the ground landing. And so both of those are important points for us to clarify in this pose to pose animation. This is an important pose that has to be communicated. And so is this. But if I have those two poses, 
then if I go halfway in between, we'll see that right about here is the middle spot in between there. And so I can set a keyframe there and we get contact up in the air, contact. And so now all I have to do is adjust my up in the air pose. I may add just a little bit of bend forward on this. Now, again, the way we're going to think about all of these keyframes is as a drawing. So if we were drawing this on paper, if we were doing this animation on paper, this is how we would start off. We would do this drawing, and then this drawing, and then this drawing, and so forth. And then all of this stuff in between that Maya is giving us for free, we would have to do as individual drawings. Well, we don't have to do those individual drawings, but we do have to make sure that Maya is getting them correct. So we have our contact, and then, because this motion needs to fill pretty quick, we will squash and go to the other stretch pose. Well, I'm going to cheat just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and create my other stretch pose for the next jump there, and lean the character into that. And so now we get there to there, but we need a little bit of a spot in the middle where this character squashes to show the absorption of that energy coming down from the, from the jump. So they hit the ground and then it squashes. And so I'll put just a little bit of squash here and maybe even a little bit of a bend forward and adjust my bend height. And so now we'll see on this jump, if we watch it, it feels like the character is jumping forward to there. <laughs> 